Hello there and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up RAID and install Proxmox on the HP DL360 Gen 7. So as you can see I'm on the HPE website and we're going to need a tool called HPE Lights Out Standalone Remote Console for Windows. So you're going to download that from here, the setup.exe and then I've got it open open right here so you can mount a virtual disk image but I've uh, written the USB uh, Proxmox USB using Bellina Etcher so I've already done that and um, so we're gonna click the power switch um, on here momentary press and we are going to boot up the system so uh, I've got the USB uh, plugged into the front USB port um, so I'm going to show you how to set up RAID first and then we'll boot into the USB to install Proxmox. So let's wait for it to uh, post. So as you can see we are now posting. Uh, you can see there at the bottom postcode FE05. Uh, so we can see that the blinking light so that means that it's performing its checks. The fans will be quite loud whilst it uh, configures them. Um, I've got the HP static low performance mode enabled because of uh, power costs right now and uh, we're going to wait for it to post and I'll show you how to access the RAID configuration menu now the RAID control that it's using is the uh, HP P40i uh, as the RAID controller so I have uh, two 6 core Xeons uh, 5660s and when we see HP Smart Array P440i RAID controller we want to uh, keep pressing F8 so I press that and you can see uh, we come up with this menu now you can see if you view on logical drives there are some available that is because I already have some RAID set up but I'm going to delete them for the purpose of this video so as you can see that HP Smart Array P410 uh, I is plugged in so we're going to delete all the red partitions so I've got two two terabyte drives a one terabyte two uh, 300 gigabyte sash, uh, two 146 gigabyte sash drives and a 240 gigabyte SSD so when you uh, go on this menu you, you will see this message which is there are no available logical drives so we need to create a logical drive so a logical drive is like a drive that the operating system sees when it's actually multiple drives so you can press enter and it'll tell you uh, RAID 5 uh, you can do RAID 0 which gives us 3 terabytes uh, or we can just do RAID 0 and get four terabytes which is what I'm going to do so you press enter and then F8 so it's going to be the size of four terabytes you press F8 and save the configuration file let's do the main boot drive which is the 246 gigabyte sash drives we're going to do it in a red one uh, press enter F8 again and we're going to do that for all drives um, so this is going to be my NAS drive, this one terabyte one. Obviously RAID 0 because there's only one drive. And finally the SSD that's going to be in RAID 0 as well. So let's do that. So once you've got all that set up, it's pretty simple. You just go down to select boot volume. We need to make sure this is uh, worked. And make sure you view. Uh, what logical drive it's under so this is two which is a two sash drive so it's going to have a red one redundancy and we're going to select a direct attach volume and it's going to be the second one there we go I press F8 and then it will uh, go up there so now we're going to press escape and it will continue to post you will hear two beeps then you need to keep tapping F11 and you will reach this menu you want to click boot from USB drive key 
and we will get a grub menu and now we can click install proxbox v and let the installer load so as you can see whilst it's loading you will get an IP address you might hear the server in the background it will go quite loud and you will get a weird freak out which is because it's only in 480p the display uh, so you can't really see the full uh, screen so I just press the right arrow key and enter uh, make sure the dev SDA, the, obviously the 136 gig slash drives are selected press right arrow and enter again and then we're going to tab down to the bottom right arrow enter enter your password tab enter your password again enter your email address and then do right arrow enter give you a uh, single host name so hsvpv.local make sure the IP is correct and the interface uh, I'm just going to leave it like that for now right arrow enter and then right arrow enter again now you can see it's creating its partitions uh, so I'll, I'll meet you when it's still finished so you may get an error message like this um, which is unlikely but if you do you just want to reboot the machine you can now see that we're posting again uh, this time it should work Usually we should have done a reboot uh, when we set the RAID options, but uh, I decided to not do that. So we'll see if we can boot back into the USB, and I'll meet you when it starts installing again. As you can see now, it's actually working. So uh, a little tip, make sure that you um, reboot after you set a RAID configuration. So let's let the installation carry through, and I'll meet you back uh, when it tells us to reboot. Here we go, we're almost done installing. It's actually configuring the web interface now. Here we go, it says make system bootable. We're at 99% now. So we should see uh, installation complete around this area. Sorry for the low latency mouse. Uh, so we're gonna press enter. We're going to eject the USB out of our server, which I have done. And we're going to let the server reboot, so we'll be back when it's posted. There we go, we are now posting. So, we have hyperthreading enabled, so that means I can use the 24th thread in Proxbox instead of just the cores. So we're going to wait for it to post and we also have 32 gigabytes of RAM which is essential for running virtual machines. So here we are, we are posting. And this time we're obviously not going to press F11 or anything after the beep. So you can see that the smart array is initializing all of our four logical drives that we created. I do need to do a firmware update on the drives. There we go, we just did the audible tone, but we aren't going to press anything this time. And as you can see, if we press enter, we can start booting into Proxmox. So it could take quite a while as it is the first boot but then we will go on to actually configuring Proxmox so as you can see we have an IP address and now we're gonna go on Chrome so here we are on Google Chrome so we're gonna enter HTTPS double colon forward slash 192.168.0.211 colon 8006 press enter Obviously, our connection is not private, but we click proceed anyway. 
and we're greeted with the login screen so the default username is root and the password is the one that you've set you'll get this message don't worry about it press ok so here we are if you look in summary you can see that our hardware is showing up but what about adding our disks so if we go to disks here you can see that we have all of our disks show up including our SAS drive but we're going to create an LVM thin volume with our 4 terabyte drive and we're going to call it vm-storage I'm going to click create details and now we're going to wait for it to be created this does take quite a while as obviously it's 4 terabytes so I'll meet you back when it's finished as you can see it says task all care so now we're going to do that for all the other pools so let's do it for the 1 terabyte one all this VM storage 2 and whilst we're doing that I will show you how to upload an ISO file so if we head to local ISO images we're actually going to need to wait for this actually so I'll meet you back when it is finished so here we are we've created them um, so we're going to head to the main HSV PV node then we're going to go to local because all these aren't set up to hold ISO images except from this local one then we're going to click upload and then you're going to select an ISO file so let me just select Ubuntu uh, we'll select open media vault we're going to click upload and we're going to wait for that to upload it shouldn't take long depending on the speed of your internet card on the server I know that it's a gigabit per second so shouldn't take that long then it's going to copy over to its uh, place and now we can click create VM I'm going to call this NAS go to OS and then select open media vault then Linux and then we're going to leave most things at default I'm going to change this to SATA and put it under the 4 terabyte drive I'm going to give it yep, 32 gigabyte of storage and we're going to add another drive that is worth a terabyte there we go and we're not going to back that one up we're going to click CPU, we're going to give it a quad core and make sure it's host and 2 gigabytes of RAM will do turn off the firewall if you don't use it we're going to click confirm and finish and now it is creating so you can click start and go to the console tab and then you set up the VM like it's a real machine so that's going to be it for this video uh, thanks ever so much for watching um, and I will see you in the next video goodbye